All right, get ready for a roller coaster ride through some of the most mind boggling, jaw dropping, and downright bizarre incidents where people unfortunately lost their lives. This video will have you questioning humanity's decision making skills. So grab some popcorn and maybe a helmet and prepare yourself for a wild roller coaster of unbelievable stories. Ah, the classic tale of forgetfulness meets extreme sports. In the annals of daredevil mishaps and moments that make you go, wait, seriously, we have the unforgettable story of Ivan McGuire. Picture this, it's 1988 in North Carolina, and our protagonist is an experienced skydiver ready to embark on a two-mile jump. But here's where things take a turn for the tragic. Ivan remembered his camera, but somehow managed to forget his parachute. Yes, folks, you heard that right. He strapped on a camera to capture his daring feat, but neglected the crucial element that would ensure he lived to tell the tale. And so it goes down in history as the day a skydiver filmed his own death instead of capturing breathtaking aerial footage. Ah, the irony of life's poetic justice. Let me tell you a tale that is both shocking and electrifying. Meet Michael Godwin, a man who found himself in quite the hair-raising situation. Convicted of murder and initially sentenced to death by electrocution, fate had other plans for him. In a twist of events that would make even the most seasoned screenwriter raise an eyebrow, Godwin met his untimely demise through an unexpected encounter with electrical currents. While attempting to fix a broken television set, he bit into wires while sitting on a metal toilet in his prison cell and died by electrocution. It seems that life has a way of serving up its own brand of poetic justice. From facing death by electrocution to meeting his end in such an ironic fashion, justice was served. In Toronto, Canada, there was a lawyer named Gary Hoy who had an unconventional way of proving a point. You see, Gary was convinced that the glass windows of his office building were unbreakable. And what better way to demonstrate this than by throwing himself against the glass? In a move that can only be described as bold, or perhaps just plain bonkers, Gary launched himself towards the window on the 24th floor of the Toronto Dominion Center. Now, you might be thinking, what happened next? Did he bounce back like a superhero? Well, not quite. The glass itself remained intact upon impact, much to everyone's surprise. But unfortunately for poor Gary, the window frame couldn't handle his enthusiasm for proving his point. It gave way under the pressure, leading to his tragic and fatal fall. In the annals of bizarre accidents, this story from Caratinga, Brazil is a strange one. The universe decided to play a cruel prank on poor Juan Maria de Souza. Little did he know that his peaceful slumber would be rudely interrupted by an unexpected visitor, a one-ton cow crashing through his roof like a bovine wrecking ball. Now, I don't know about you, but I always thought cows were supposed to stick to grazing in fields and mooing their way through life. But this particular cow decided to take matters into its own hooves and venture onto the roof of this humble abode. Unfortunately for Juan, his roof was made of asbestos, which turned out to be no match for the weighty ambitions of our bovine friend. The roof buckled under the pressure, and gravity took over as the cow plummeted down towards poor Joao. The unsuspecting man was crushed by the airborne cow. The U.S. Open in 1983 witnessed a tragic incident involving Dick Vertime, a linesman, and player Stefan Edberg. During a match, Edberg served a ball that struck Vertime in the groin, causing him to fall out of his chair and hit his head on the hardcourt surface. This unfortunate event resulted in Vertime's untimely demise. On 18th of January, 1977, a tragic incident occurred in Rome involving Luciano Ricciconi, a 28-year-old professional footballer for SS Lazio, and the Italy national football team. Cecconi was shot dead while participating in what was intended to be a practical joke. The unfortunate event unfolded when Luciano, who was known for his playful nature, decided to play a prank on a friend by wearing a mask 
and pretending to rob his jewelry store. However, the situation took an unexpected turn when someone mistook the prank for a real robbery and fired a fatal shot, resulting in his untimely demise. On May 16, 1970, tragedy struck at Dodger Stadium when 14-year-old Alan Fish was struck in the head by a foul ball hit by Manny Mota during a Los Angeles Dodgers game. Initially, Alan was knocked unconscious for a minute, but seemed to recover after receiving basic medical attention at the Dodger Stadium Infirmary, which included an ice pack and two aspirin. However, upon returning home, Alan's condition began to worsen. Concerned about his deteriorating state, his parents promptly sought further medical attention. Unfortunately, despite their efforts and medical intervention, things took a turn for the worse. Alan ultimately succumbed to an intracerebral hemorrhage. This tragic incident marked a devastating moment in Major League Baseball history as Alan Fish became the first fan to die from injuries sustained by a foul ball during a game. In 1982, a pair of roommates in Arizona decided to take their desert adventure to a whole new level. Armed with guns and fueled by mischief, or perhaps just plain curiosity, David Grunman and James Joseph Suchochi set out to have some fun with the saguaro cacti near Lake Pleasant. Grunman's first target was a smaller saguaro cactus, which he shot so many times that it eventually met its thorny demise and thudded to the ground. But oh no, that wasn't enough for our daring duo. They had their eyes set on something much grander, a towering 26-foot-high cactus estimated to be a century old. Grunman took aim and fired away at the ancient cactus until it, too, was a mere image of its former self. But things didn't end well for our cactus-seeking marksmen. As they took aim at another majestic cactus, tragedy struck. The mighty cactus he had just blown to bits fought back. It toppled over onto Grunman with such force that it tragically ended his life. In 1992, while on vacation and visiting the Grand Canyon, Greg Austin Gingrich decided to add a little thrill to his family vacation. With his teenage daughter by his side, he thought it would be hilarious to play act losing his balance and scare the living daylights out of her. So, like a true daredevil, he leaped onto a guard wall and began flailing his arms in an exaggerated manner. Little did he know that this comedic act was about to take an unexpected turn. In what was supposed to be a comical moment, Gingrich gracefully fell from the wall onto a short slope below, assuming he would land safely and earn applause for his theatrics. But alas, fate had other plans. As his daughter nonchalantly continued on her way, unimpressed by her father's antics, poor Greg missed his footing and found himself on an unplanned descent towards the canyon's depths. And so it goes. One moment you're trying to make your child laugh with your acrobatic skills, and the next you're falling into eternity. Rest in peace, Greg Austin Gingrich. May your comedic spirit live on in the annals of vacation. Mishaps gone wrong. In a tragic incident, Michael Edwards, a member of the Electric Light Orchestra during its early years, met an untimely demise on the 3rd of September, 2010. The unfortunate accident occurred when a massive cylindrical hay bale, weighing a staggering 1,200 pounds, rolled down a hillside and collided with the van he was driving. The news sent shockwaves through the music industry and left fans mourning the loss of a talented musician. Kurt Godel, an Austrian-American logician and mathematician, is widely regarded as one of the most significant figures in the field of mathematical logic. However, his life was marked by a peculiar and tragic circumstance. Godel developed an obsessive fear of being poisoned his fear of poisoning was so intense that he refused to eat food prepared by anyone other than his wife. He believed that only she could be trusted to ensure the safety of his meals. Unfortunately, when his wife fell ill and was hospitalized, Godel found himself in a difficult situation. With no one else to prepare his meals, Godel would not eat. His fear of being poisoned overpowered his need for food. As a result, he tragically starved to death and died on January 14, 1978.